why. So a difference. So something you can drink on a daily basis, or someone we obviously exactly. you could drink this on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. But something with a little more tannin grip, a little more potential for aging, and a little more flavor intensity. And something about bringing a bottle over someone's house that says reserve on it makes it a little bit sexier, and they know already that you've you've you've, you've spent a little bit more yeah. and you've done little, a little bit little of research. More, yeah. <laughs> Fun stuff. Well, there you go. This is our little uh, kebab, if you will. You can see our juice is uh, reduced down. I'm going to add a little bit more of that as that's going on. We're going to salt and pepper, salt and pepper this guy. Make sure we're seasoned. Up both sides. And there's not a lot of fat on that duck since we removed that duck yeah. skin. So we're going to be careful with this guy. And we're just going to, we're going to put a tiny bit of oil just so it doesn't stick to the uh, stick to our grill there. So you can see all the berries, all the juice, the Shiraz is reduced down a tiny bit. And we're getting a little bit of sweetness. It's gonna be, a, it's gonna have a little bit of bite to it because you reduce down all those wonderful flavors from the wine. Exactly. And then we've got a little bit of berry. There's a little bit of sugar in those, uh, obviously the berries and the, uh, yeah. and the and cherries. A concentrated acidity from the wine as well. Exactly. Ooh, now, we're gonna, color. now we're gonna pour this in here. And this, this you wanna do hot. Otherwise, it will not blend together. And of course, those shallots that are in there also that are going to be our blending, and also the skins and uh, everything wonderful in those in those berries are going to give their all. I'm going to have you turn this on. Let me put the top on. Otherwise, we will go home purple. Up. Go ahead and give that. And you want to do this in a blender, not in a food processor, because you really want the speed. Go ahead and just barely turn it on. There you go. A little bit faster. There you go. A little bit faster. There we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna emulsify all those shallots and the berries and everything are beat are beat up, and they're gonna make almost like a almost a pulp. Go up a little bit faster. Now into that we're gonna emulsify some grapeseed oil, the one oil that doesn't congeal in the refrigerator either. It has no flavor, so all of that is gonna taste like that, but it's gonna bulk it up and loosen it up, almost make it like a vinaigrette and give it a little texture. So we're going to add that. Hopefully it's not raining uh, red wine all over it. Put both together there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what that looks like. And you can see it's almost like a... Oh, look at that. See that? So it's bulked together. Yep. A little bit of fruit left in there, but it should be uh, should be beat up and up. And we didn't salt and pepper that. We're going to wait right until the end. Make sure we get enough in there, because sometimes when you cook things and you've got pepper in there, as long as that pepper, if that takes 10 or 15 minutes to reduce, and you pepper it at the beginning, this pepper is giving a lot of wonderful pepper flavor right now. Yeah. Whereas if I would have peppered it way earlier, that pepper would have just bloomed, yeah. and you would have had and spice and heat, and uh, and I don't want that much. Yeah. I don't want a lot of heat so in what's going on. Just the fresh pepper, just, fresh just the fresh pepper taste, exactly. So that's what that's looking like. It should be. Should be good. Give it a try. Tell me what you think. Very, very, very winey. I mean, you can taste that's Shiraz at its best. Cherries, and all we've done is added more fruit to your incredible fruit-driven wine, but almost like a vinaigrette and something fun. And this you can do ahead of time. So that's something you can do when it can set. Retains a lot of that freshness too. Isn't that crazy? Mm. Good stuff. So uh, now we're gonna try and grill this guy. We've got our salt and pepper on him. We're gonna go over here, let me slide by you. So what we're gonna do, and this obviously would normally be outside, and uh, we're just gonna Throw that guy on there like that. And the onion, if it's not completely cooked, not the end of the world. Mango, if it's got a little bit of sear on it, it's gonna be fun. The duck, we just, the, the whole goal, don't overcook the duck. Yeah. A nice medium rare, medium we're okay with. And the snow peas, we've already blanched them off a tiny bit, so it's not, yeah. all we're doing is really reheating those guys up. And, uh, and you know, it's not, it's not, maybe not easy for you guys, but I'm thinking more for the United States and the uh, millions of people that are gonna be watching this and looking for a dish. It's easy for us to find duck, but what would you guys be eating? What, what's summertime for you and the kids and the family? Uh, any, anything from sausages, continental or Italian sausages, to lamb, to a nice T-bone steak. It all, it all goes well in summer and certainly goes well with yellowtail. And grilled or even sautéed, even if you're home. You don't want to get the barbecue out, you don't want to do any of that. Exactly. Just pan frying is good enough sometimes with good olive oil. Good olive oil and 
and once again, chill the wine a little bit beforehand, and you sure. watch and see the difference. I'd actually rather have a little red chilled. I'd rather have a little chill to it and let it sit in the glass and come up and the temperature. Warm up. Yeah, rather than it be warm. Yeah, yeah. there's there's yeah. nothing it's worse than warm wine. You and for people that don't normally drink red wine, red wine at the wrong temperature is a bad experience. It's at the right temperature, it's a completely different experience. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people is we just don't know. We're just trying to teach people, and if you get anything out of this and love the duck or hate the duck, and you can get something out of it, chill your wine a little bit, just, and, yeah. and jump it up and give it a try because reserve for an extra six bucks, which is amazing to me, is, uh, is, is well yes. worth it. All right, we're going to turn this guy over. Up. And you can see not much, not much time at all. All right, so there you go. Look at that. Nice and grilled, perfect, ready to go. One thing good about this, you can do this ahead of time. You can have the kids help out, and we can skewer them all up and put them in the fridge. You just want to bring them out and have them at room temperature rather than put something cold on the grill like that. And mostly, also, you want to watch when you're putting a little bit of oil on like that. Keep it, if you've got your charcoal in the middle or something like that, have it off to the side a little bit, otherwise. Yeah, so it doesn't flame up too badly. Flame yeah. is not good. Flame, no, a little bit of flame is fun, a little bit of flame sexy, a lot of flame is dark and charcoal no. and, and, it's not good flame. and dangerous for your yeah. health, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No matter how much wine you drink, it's not gonna help charcoal, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> charcoal meat. Well, it does look tasty though. All right, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna put, instead of putting this, uh, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a pretty sauce, it's a pretty color, but if we were to drizzle that all across the top, it's not gonna look as good. So what I'm gonna do is just put some down along the bottom and then you still get a little bit with each bite and we'll kind of water some along the side just to just for fun. Pull this guy, he's not too hot. Slide that off. Up. Just like that. And you have poured us a couple glasses of wine. I'm gonna add a little bit of just a tiny bit of mint. Because I want a little bit of the which is gonna help sort of that fun tropical flavors that we have here. I can add a lot, but just a just a hint that you'll find along the way in each bite. Mm, I can smell the mint from here. It's so nice. But not a it's lot, so just fresh. a exactly. Something in, it's it's amazing how that freshens up a dish and you wouldn't see it so and much. A lot of people uh, see it a lot with lamb, but yeah. uh, and you wouldn't want it to dominate either. No, gosh no, just a little something. So there you go. There's our uh, June stay at home vacation, <laughs> staycation, something fun with the Shiraz. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I know this wine. I'm already excited because I know it's gonna go well because I've, I've actually never done this before but I've done that sauce before so I know the sauce is also gonna help and duck's gonna work out really well. And Shiraz, ex explain to somebody, my dad has no idea what Shiraz is. After living in Burgundy for 11 years, knowing the Rhone Valley, Shiraz is everything. Yes. I, mean, I think anybody who hasn't tried a good Shiraz is missing out on something. You know, and I call it a big brother to Merlot. Ah, fine. It seems to be bigger and softer and fruitier and a lot easier to make a big, rich wine than what it is to make a big, rich Merlot. So, so um, not crazy tannins. They're not looking no, for rest. Because that's no, really no. what scares people well, off. Well, exactly. Think. You can, but we don't. Our style isn't about tannin. It's about flavor, you know, fruit and softness and a great aftertaste. And roundness and, 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 and I think as a whole, thinking of a wine as a whole, where it's not something that really overtakes no. any other component in no, the wine no. and just and a... If, yeah, exactly. It should always complement a meal. Always. Not dominate it, but complement. Fun stuff. Mm. It's just round and soft. Oh my gosh, is that good. That is a that, that is a friendly wine. See, that's a big word. It's so, a friendly wine. Exactly, and that's what it's meant to be. And anybody who sort of normally drinks Merlot should try a Shiraz and should try Yellow Tail Shiraz. Let's try it. I'm, we're we're going to. You let me know. I'm you, I'm, I'm going to let you dig in first. You've already won because the wine is spectacular. So okay. we'll uh, we'll see how it works out. and see how that tastes. So a little bit. You can put the sauce. You can have a just mm. a, just a tiny bit. Does it work? What an unusual combination of flavors. It's smoky, it's rich. And the fruit from the sauce comes through. A little bit of fun. A little bit of and a, a little bit of hint of the mint at the end and kind of mm. kind of refreshing at the end too. And refreshing wine and at the right temperature. My gosh, people don't drink hot wine. No wonder you people don't drink. But we've changed around. I mean I know I think if anyone we gotta say you have changed this around on Shiraz in the United States because Ten years ago, I don't think anyone knew what Shiraz was in the United States. Very little, but it's and now you're selling millions of cases in the United States at a reasonable price, and, and I think that's what. If anyone's done it, I think you and congratulations to you and your family because it's a team effort. I know that there's a there's a whole squad back there. Thank you for what Cheers you do. Again. And, uh, Cheers again. Great one.